many know that you're sold out. You're going to hold out. You're fully committed. Why don't you stand on your feet and just kind of lift those hands? Come on. Oh, no. Just wave those hands. Tell him thank you. Oh. I'll say yeah. Come on and say yeah. I'll say yeah. I'll say yeah. I'll say yes. I'll give the Lord yes. Come on. Oh, I'll say yeah. I'll say yes. I'll say yes. Yeah. For the rest of my life, I'll give you a yes, God. Hey, oh, I'm sold out. Somebody know to say I'm sold out. I'm gonna hold out. Whoa. I'm fully. I'm fully. I'm fully. I'm fully. I'm fully committed. Oh yes, oh yes. Tell God thank you all over the building. Boy, it is a wonderful, wonderful blessing to be able to be back in the house of the Lord. Those who are assembled here and those who are watching us, and I want you to know there's something brewing in the air. There's something in the atmosphere. God is moving in a magnanimous way in a miraculous way we serve a mighty God we serve a miracle working God we serve a God that all things are possible to them who believe how many in this building this morning believe I believe I believe shout real loud I I believe I believe in the impossible I believe that God is a miracle working God and I believe that whatever it is that you need God to do he's right here to do it right now lift those hands to heaven and just worship him in your own way because when you're sold out and you're fully committed you learn how to hold out through it all you learn how to trust in him you, through it all you learn how to depend upon him through it all come high water come, come low water low valleys high mountains you still make it somebody say I will make it I will make it yes 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 it's good to be here this morning look over at your neighbor and say neighbor Jesus is here come on and tell him real loud I know he's here. The reason why I know it is because that when I woke up this morning, somebody said he's always by my side. And I know that it was not, not myself that woke me up. I know that it wasn't my locked door that kept me last night. I know for a fact that when I went to sleep, I, I wanted to have a good night's rest, and he let me sleep all night long. I, I wasn't tossing and turning. Ain't God all right? It is a good thing to have a good night's sleep, and you, you ain't tossing and turning because you can just rest in God. Somebody shout, glory, I thank God for a good night's sleep. But early this morning, Old deacons used to pray a prayer and say, He taught me. He didn't say he touched me. He taught me with a finger of love. Behold, my eyes came open. And I saw a brand new day. And I and my, my last night, my bed wasn't my cooling board. And the kiver they said that I covered in wasn't my whining sheet. I'm glad to be alive. Somebody shout, I'm glad to be alive. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Yes, yes, yes. I grab that Bible this morning and turn that Bible to Hebrews chapter 11 and verses 24 through 26. Hebrews chapter 11 verses 24 
through 26. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. How many know some things just last for a season? Esteeming the reproach of Christ, greater riches than the treasures of Egypt. For he had respect unto the recompense of the reward. I, I, I want to talk about this morning that faith is making a decision. You may be seated in the presence of God. Faith is making a decision. Can I talk to somebody this morning that need a word from the Lord? There's one tailor made just for you. The, the very best thing you have and the most awesome thing you have in this world that you are created in the image and the likeness of God and when he created you he gave you the ability to make a choice your choice determines your outcome not where you begin at but where you end up at so when you make a choice, you got to be very careful in your decision making. Because if you're not walking by faith, faith is obeying the word of God. See, when you obey the word of God, then you can make the right decisions. Because you're going to make decisions based upon what the word of God says about your life. And see, when you make decisions upon impulse, I don't know what's going to happen. But when you make decisions based upon obeying the word of God, faith is being obedient to God's word. God says, do this. That's what faith tells me to do. Ain't God all right? It doesn't act on itself, but it acts upon the motivation of the word of God. And then everything that comes to you from, through faith, it comes from a spiritual realm. Everything that's birthed out of you through faith comes from a spiritual realm. Now, a lot of stuff that we do is natural because we do it by our natural thinking. And we find ourselves in trouble because we naturally think this is how it works. But when you begin to listen to God and obey the word of God, then you're going to understand you won't be in trouble. You're going to face some difficulties, but he said a prudent man, he always asks questions and asks somebody who knows something about what I'm getting ready to do. Because faith will cause you to connect yourself with the right people. Faith don't cause you to connect yourself with the wrong people. Faith causes you to connect yourself with the people that think <laughs> like you think because you're walking on God's word and then you ask a person of wisdom and knowledge and understanding what you think about this situation. And that person can give you a godly answer. You can't ask folks that not of faith what you're going to do in a godly decision. Can I get a witness in here? And then when you make decisions, some people say, well, I made a mistake. No, life ain't no mistake. Life is about choices. Life is about choices. You made a choice to do that. Ain't God all right? Everything that happened in my life, I look back and I, I beat myself up. I made a choice to do that. And now I made a choice that I'd never do it again. Ain't God all right? Faith said you can make it without that. You don't need that. You don't need. Come on, somebody. Faith is making a decision. A decision that says you're going to obey God. 
I, I, I remember in the 13th chapter of, 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 of the book of 1 King and around about the first verse, it talks about this man of God who came to Jeroboam, the king, and he came and he, he said, I got a word from the Lord. And he told him, I have a word from the Lord, this altar here, that there is going to be a son of David born by the name of Josiah that was going to be on this altar and bones going to be on this altar. And this altar <laughs> and men's bone going to be burned on this altar. And this altar is going to crumble down. But then Jeroboam said, i tell y'all what y'all do. Get him out of here. In other words, this devil... You can't come talking like this. And he stretched forth his hand for them, and his hand withered up. And he said, could you, he said, could you please pray to God that my hand be restored? This man of God prayed, and his hand was restored to normal. Then he said to the man of God, man of God, since this happened, why don't you come to my house and eat bread and drink and, and I, I want to take care of you for what you've done. He said, God spoke to me and told me to come give you a word, but he told me don't come to your house. Don't eat or to drink. But go and don't even leave the same way you came. Ain't God all right. But then he left there and began to go out, been in another line prophet said, which way did he go? And they said, he went that way. So he went out and he was sitting down and he found him. And he says to him, he says to him, listen, man, come to my house. You know, I know you're weary, tired, you're doing God's work. Come to my house, sit down, eat and drink. He said, but God told me, don't eat or drink in this place, but leave another way. He said, but Listen to me, man. I'm a man of God, too. He said, come to my house, eat in the drink. And the man of God went with him to his house, sit down and ate, drink. Left there and on his way, on his donkey. A lion came out of the woods, killed him, mauled him up. And when they came through there, the lion was standing by the donkey. What you saying, Pastor Hare? When God, when you obey God, when you miss obeying God, you're going to get ate up. But when you obey, if he had obeyed God, he could have went on about his business, but he let somebody else act like they was a child of God. When you get a word from God, you don't let nobody change your mind. Watch the folk who talking about their women and men. If you got a word from God in your worship place, don't let nobody contaminate the word that you've got, that you're moving forward and you're going to do this and what God has told you to do. Don't listen to nobody. Say, I can't do it. I got a word from God. I, I don't care what it looked like. You can try to make me feel some kind of way, but I am not changing my mind because I lose out with what God has for me. And what God has for me, I don't want to lose out. I know I got a blessing. It may not look like it right now. It may not look like nothing that happened in your life right now. It may not look good, but God has got a blessing with your name on it as long as you obey the word, as long as you stick to what God has told you and not listen to in and everybody. Ain't God all right? God is an awesome God. Faith is making a decision. Hebrews 11, 24, he said, by faith, he, Moses, he, he forsook that. He, he, he forsook it. When he got up in age, Moses, here he is. Let's, let's kind of build his foundation here. I, I believe I just go back. He, his mother, when he had Moses as a baby, Moses come at a time when Egypt wanted to kill all they wanted to kill all the boy babies because the devil always knew a deliverer was coming the devil want to get you before you are birthed before you get into your miraculous 
work for the Lord. He want to catch you at an early age. He want to catch you when you first get started. When you first get started something, if he can just get in your mind, he know he got you. So they're going to kill all the boy babies. So Moses' mother takes Moses, put him in a basket. Takes Moses and put him down in the river. That takes faith. See, that, there are some folk in here, and, and maybe your children giving you trouble. Maybe, maybe they're worrying you. Maybe they're driving you up the wall. That comes a point in your life, and I don't care how, how it looks, there comes a point in your life where you have to have a faith decision to take those children and give them to God. She says, I, 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 there's nothing more I can do because they're going to kill him if I hold him right in here. But if I put him in the river, he might have a chance. Ain't God all right? He, he just might have a chance if I put him in the river. I got to put him in the river of life that God said, I got, I, I, I got a river flowing out. You will never thirst. She sticks him into the river, and while he's in the river, look at his sister, his sister Miriam. She's just hanging around and, and trying to set this thing up. See, God knows how to work for you when you make a faith decision. His sister Miriam is hanging around. She's hanging around the river, and then all of a sudden, Pharaoh's daughter comes down to the river and hears a baby crying. Now she hears the baby crying, and now she gets the baby. And now she doesn't know what to do with the baby, but she wanted the baby. But she can't do what this baby needs. Ain't God all right? What a baby needs at early stages is the people of God. Be careful who you let keep your baby. Be careful who you let take your baby to the bathroom. Be careful who talk to your children. Be careful where they go to school at. I, I wish I had some help here. Don't let your baby hang around anybody. So now Miriam comes and, and looks at her and she says, I, the baby is at nurturing stage. This is a baby. The baby needs milk from the mama. I wish I had some help here. And, and Miriam, and then the woman said, I need to find an Israelite woman, because this is an Israelite, I need to find an Israelite woman that will nurture this baby. So Miriam standing there said, I tell you what I would do. I would take the baby and care. Y'all better help me preaching here this morning. I would take the baby and carry the baby to an Israelite woman. Ain't God all right? Miriam take the baby, carry the baby to an Israelite woman. And that was Moses' mother. When you make a faith decision, you ain't got to worry about your children. Somebody said, God got them, God got them, God got them. God got your children. She made that faith decision here. And the Bible says that the baby grew. I, 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 the baby grew. In other words, he grew, she was nurturing him, and he grew. And, and some theologians have said that maybe after he got through at the breast stage of, of his mother, they may have, took, may have took, taken him back to the Pharaoh's daughter. But something in my spirit, I don't know what God gave to me this morning, he said, no, I believe. <laughs> and he said, what happened was, the baby probably was 11 or 12 years old because he grew. Ain't God all right? And since he grew and now he's 12 years old, that means when he go back to Pharaoh's daughter, now the Bible says she got him and he grew again. He got to be 40 years old. At 40 years old, he started thinking. They have grew him up in all the heretics, the hieroglyphics of the language of the Egyptians, the educational system of the Egyptians. 
the way they worship in the scriptures, grips how they had to write them. They had him in all these different languages because the Canaanites and all of these ites was all around. He knew all of these languages. He got educated. And here he is growing up in Pharaoh's house with all this knowledge of Egypt. Everything that Pharaoh's household had taught him. And then they're telling him, you are the next in line. I'm talking about Pharaoh is the most powerful man on earth at that particular time. You're going to be the next person in line to rule Egypt. Which one of us in here could turn that down? Ain't God all right? Here he is. But at 40 years old, the Bible says, he refused. When he came to years, he refused to be called the son of the Pharaoh's daughter. Ain't that something? That is a faith decision. Who don't want fame? Every person in this building and, and people that's listening to me want fame. People want to be recognized. People, people want to be looked up to. People want to be patted on the back. But here he is. Say, I don't care. See, I want to tell you about salvation. Salvation is a faith decision. Romans 10, 8 through 11 says these words, but what saith it? The word is not thee. It is faith that I'm preaching this morning. The word is not thee. That if thou confess with the mouth that the Lord Jesus and shall believe in thine heart that God had raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. See, in order to be saved, you got to make a decision. And that decision is a faith decision. You may not feel nothing, but you can, you got a word. It may not, not people tell me, I got knocked down. No, 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 no. A lot of times ain't nothing going to touch you, but it's a pricking in your heart. Every time you hear the word, you start getting convicted. That word, the Holy Ghost will convict you. It will, it will send a prick to your heart. And Paul said, you can't fight against that prick. One Thursday night, my sisters and brothers, I could not fight against that prick. It started pricking my heart so bad, I had to put down what I was doing and go and get down on my knees and tell the Lord, I'm sorry. See, when you start getting pricked at your heart, you got to give up something. You got to change your way of doing things. And you start saying, you know, I, there's something wrong here. And then I said, Lord, I accept you. After I told him I was sorry about everything. See, you got to become godly sorry before you can get saved. Your faith will say that I'm sorry. I give it all up. Lord, I thank you for just touching my heart because you didn't have to prick me. You didn't have to come to me. You could have went to somebody else, but you came to me and pricked my heart. <sighs> yes. And he says, thou shalt be saved. See, by faith, by faith, you do grace. By faith, you say. This is grace and his mercy that look beyond your fault and you accepted it by faith saying I got to make a faith decision I don't see nothing my life looked terrible but I'm just going to say Lord I accept you to be Lord of my life and when you do that you're going to feel a burden lift off your shoulder you're going to feel the, the weight of the world that you've been carrying you, you're going to release it it's never going to be there anymore because you are not depending upon yourself to do right there was a man in the book of Matthew, chapter uh, 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 19, uh, 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 verse, verse, he says to Jesus, he came to Jesus. He said to Jesus, said the older man came to Jesus and said, Jesus, hey, good master, what, must, what good work can I do to inherit eternal life? He said, why callest me thou good? Ain't nobody good but God. Ain't God all right? He, he says, I, I, I tell you, brother, you, 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 do you know the law? 
Love. Nay, baby, says, you know the commandment. Obey your mother and your father. You don't steal. Don't kill. Oh, y'all, y'all don't hear me. He said, listen, listen. He said, listen, I've done all of this stuff from my youth. He said, I've done all of this stuff from my youth. But Jesus said, I tell you what you do then. I need you to sell what you got. <laughs> I need you to make a faith decision. I'm not talking about you obeying some rules and obeying some stuff. I need you to make a faith decision about who you're going to serve. Me or your stuff. I wish I had some help here. See, somebody, when God tells you to do something, if he tells you to give something, you better give it. Do you going to be mauled by that bear? That, that lamb that I talked about, if he said give, you better get in your wallet and give it. I don't care if it, it break you, you better give it. I'm a living witness. God told me to give $20 one night and I wouldn't give it. I got in my car and I rode back toward Louisiana and by the time I was half asleep, police lights was all around me. And God's praying this folks said, boy, give that 20 I said, that's all we got, me and my wife. God, I know that man trying to trick me. I ain't going to let nobody use me. Come on, somebody. I know that man trying to, he, 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 it's a scam. I, 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 can I get a witness here? This is a scam. He's just trying to get your money. That devil kept talking to me, and then God said, I hear the still small voice. He said, get it out. Give it. I heard another voice say, Man, just kind of look at that man. He, he a crook. He trying to get your money. That's all you got. You got one baby. Y'all got very few. You got but a little milk in that thing. Y'all got to get back to Louisiana. I was in Jackson, Mississippi. I was living in Homer, Louisiana. He said, don't you give that money. Man, you better not give that money. Y'all going to be hungry. I got down around Booty. I don't know how we... 91, going in the home. Got me 20 for the week. Got enough gas to start money to go to Raymond Fabricators, where I was working at, being a welder helper, dragging lines. Y'all don't know nothing about me. Ain't God all right. Here I go. All of a sudden, them blue lights, and I was halfway asleep anyway. When them blue lights got on me, I woke up then, though. You know how your heart beat when they may be going around, you're going to get somebody else, but your heart Because you, you know you done done something stupid anyway. <laughs> he ain't even looking for you, but you, you're guilty. Ain't God all right? He pulls me over, back to the side, flying a flashlight in there. I said, well, we're trying to get back. I got to get to work on that. That ain't going to help, son. Did you know you was going 16 or 35? I said, I start to tell him, you should have, that, that, ain't, that ain't it. You should have saw me when I came off that bridge. <laughs> you caught me when I was going up a hill. <laughs> you should have caught me when I was coming off the bridge. I was going a little faster than that. Because my car wasn't that, it was going good down here, but up a hill didn't go too fast. Thank God, all right. That's why I was doing 60. The hill was hurting. Hallelujah. <laughs> yes. But then, did he gave the ticket and I had to go pay that ticket is eighty dollars. He got way more than twenty. Ain't God all right? All I had to do was give the twenty. Ain't no telling what would have happened in my life. But somebody probably would have blessed me with two hundred the next week. So I experienced that too. So next time when they they said give an offer, I I didn't care what the man looked like. I got my, I got, he said, it's, about, it's 100 people in here. God said, give $20. I said, I'm one. I gave 20. It was foggy that night, and I got out to my car, and an old mother came up to my car and hit on the window. And she's a young man. And that, that, that was my last 20. I, that, that wasn't my last 20, because I said, that 80 was my last. I ain't, I ain't giving up no more money like that, being no food. Ain't God all right? 
And she knocked on my window. She pulled out these hundred dollar bills. She said, God told me to give you this. I learned from that day forward how to obey God. Listen to me. You got to obey God when God tells you to do something. And then I, it, it, that, that faith is what? Making a decision. Decisions you make are going to determine what happens to you, where you end up at, whether you end up broke or blessed. Ain't God all right? It's your decision. Here, here Moses is. He come to years now. But my thing is, my brothers and sisters, I believe that during those 12 years that he was nurtured, he was told, by his mother that God promised Abraham. Let's, 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 let's think a little bit. Maybe during those years she taught him the word from the Lord. Now I don't care what they put into him in the Egyptian world, it's still down in him. That's why the Bible says train up a child in the way they should go. And when they get old, they won't depart from it because they're going to have to make decisions and all of a sudden their decisions going to be based upon the faith they got in the word of God. If they don't have the word of God, they can't have no faith because they don't have nothing to have faith in. Your faith has to have, <laughs> you have to have faith. The Bible says if you have faith in God, you got to have faith in God, not just have faith. So if I, if I got faith in God, then I got faith in what God says. So he got the word of God in him, and now he have come to years, and all of a sudden he starts saying, this not me. Ain't God all right. And I'm talking to somebody in here that know how you were raised, and you was, went to college, or you went somewhere, and you were doing these things, and all of a sudden you said, this ain't me. What am I doing? Which way I'm going? Because I've been taught differently. Now he says that I will choose the desires rather than to have the world's pleasures, the world's delights, the world's whatever the world got to offer. I would rather be with the people of God. Ain't God all right? I don't care who it is. I don't care. I'd rather be with the people of God than to have a brand new home. I would rather be with the people of God than to have accolades. I would rather be with the people of God than to have a million, million dollars. Because I know if I'm with the people of God, God is going to bless in ways that's unexplainable. You don't have to worry when you're with the people of God. How many know God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory? You may not ever have a million dollars, and there's no wrong with having a million dollars. It's good to have a million. I want everything God got for me. If he got three million for me, I'm looking for it. And he probably does, and I'm, any day I'm looking for my millions. God lay it on me. I'm ready because I'm ready to do something miraculously for your kingdom. I want to do something somebody's not doing. I want to do some things for you, God, with my money. Come on. That's why the devil just keeps holding me back from getting mine. But I'm going to get it. He'll lie. I'm going to keep preaching until I get my money. Ain't God all right? Because I, before I leave this earth, I'm going to do something better than we're doing right now. I want to feel the air blow through my ball spot as I fly like an eagle. I want to soar above everything. I want to feel the wind. I want to see it from up here, not down here. I don't want to walk around with my head down worrying about this and worrying about that. He said, I came that you may have life and have it more abundantly, and I'm making a faith decision that I want abundant life. And Moses said, I'd rather suffer with the people of God because in... 1 John 2, 15 through 16, he says, love not the world. See, you don't understand. You don't have to fit in. You can stand out. Folk want you to fit in, and you say, well, I, they, got, they don't dislike me because I'm not acting like them. No, you don't have to act like them. You can stand out. Love not the world, neither things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. You got to be willing to give everything you got when God speaks to you. 
you got to be willing to give up things in order to get the things of God. Y'all don't want to hear me, no, no. When, you, when, when it comes to giving, when it comes to giving money, as I said before, you, you can't just love your bank account. If you love your bank account more than you love God, you got a problem. Let me tell you, my wife, she would sit down, and I told her over and over, and I come, she done gave away stuff. She'd give away this and give away that. Go buy this, go buy this. I said, what are you buy? That's for so-and-so. But you know what? Stuff always come back. It always come back. Because she is a giver. When you learn how to give, you always have. See, when you don't know how to give, you can't get. God trying to give you something, and you holding a quarter in your hand, squeezing it tight. He's saying, open your hand, drop the quarter, and I'm going to give you a million dollars, but you squeezing the quarter. I'm scared I'm going to drop my quarter if I open my hand. But see, it's a faith decision when you give. I made a decision by faith. Now Moses here he is choosing rather to suffer with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures and the delights of the world. And thirdly, as I close, his decision was motivated by the power of God and not the fear that was coming his way. He did not fear the king of Egypt, Pharaoh. He was motivated by the power of God. See, when you make a faith decision, you don't have to worry about the devil. You don't have to be scared of the devil. Because God, how many know God's going to take care of you? Kind of wave your hands if you know God's going to take care of you. He made a faith move. In, in anything in your life, you got to make a faith decision and get fear out of the way. Noah made a faith decision to build an ark to save the whole world. Abraham made a faith decision to leave his own country that he could be the father of many nations. Didn't see it, didn't know how it was going to be, didn't know where it was, didn't know how it was going to be. But he made a decision. You have to make a decision when it comes to God about your life. You have to make a decision sometimes that seem like you can't see how it's going to turn out. But long as you stand on the promises of God, how many know everything will be all right? If you know it, it's going to be all right, just kind of wave your hand and say everything will be all right. God is an awesome God. Here Moses is making that decision. He didn't worry about Pharaoh. He did not worry about what Pharaoh could do to him. First of all, he knew that God will make a way. He knew that how they taught him is in what was on the inside of him. See, what's on the outside don't depict what's on the inside. You know what's going on around here. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's, it's good for a ship to be on the sea and glide on the sea. But well, Pastor Hal, it's not good for the water to start getting in the ship. Ain't God all right? What you saying, Pastor Hal? I'm saying that uh, in this world you living in, it's good that we live here. It's good to live in this world. But don't let the world start living in you. Come when the world start living in you, your ship going down. Because on that mean a hole has gotten in your boat. Oh Lord, I don't know about you, but the God said, Oh Lord, He's able to keep you from falling. He's able to hold you up. Well, when you make a faith decision, 
Make sure it is a faith decision. Because sometimes we begin to operate in our own self. Moses had it down in his heart, but he started the wrong way. He wanted to deliver the children of Israel, but one day he saw an Egyptian hurting an Israelite. Moses jumped up and, and said, I'm going to kill you. Kill that Egyptian. But God said, Moses, that's not a faith decision. Moses, I want you to do it. But Moses, you got to obey my word. Moses, you're not ready yet. Moses, you're not ready to be no leader because you still got some worldly fight in you. I need you to come with me and go around this mountain for 40 more years every day he's going around this mountain God is training Moses he said Moses you not ready to lead my people because somebody that's leading my people they got to be a man of faith. If the power of God it don't rest on them, they can't do it. I need somebody that believes they don't have to fight. This battle is not yours. When you make a faith decision, you turn the battle over to the Lord. Should I feel like preaching? Ain't God all right? Oh, Moses, you not ready. You still wet behind the ears. Ain't God all right? I got a few more rounds to go. I got a few more valleys you need to go through. I got a few more mountains you need to climb. I got a few more of you getting down on your knees. I got a few more nights of you shedding some tears. I got a few more nights of you calling on my name and say, Lord, I can't do it, but Lord, I know you can. Ain't God all right? Is it anybody here? Know that you tried it your way, but then the Lord had to break you down and tell you you can't trust in the horses you can't trust in the army but not by might not by your might but it's by my power and by my spirit says the Lord ain't God alright Moses I need you to recognize just who I am. I know it's down on the inside. I know your mama told you about me, but you really don't know me. But I got a bush that I'm going to set on fire so you can learn how to trust in me. You've been going around this mountain driving these sheep for a long time but your eyes has never come open because I'm burning I got fire that can shut up in your bones and you can't hold your peace but you ain't saw it yet but one day one day when Moses looked around his eyes his eyes they came open he stopped the bush probably already they already been burning but this time it caught his attention because he done went through hell and high water see when you've been through what I've been through you can see when the Lord's speaking to you when you have had to cry all night long you can see when 
God is speaking to you. He stopped at the bush. The bush was burning and the bush never burned up. He was amazed and all of a sudden his eyes is open and the bush burning and all of a sudden God said, Moses, oh Moses, I don't know about you, but you have heard his voice. He's speaking to you. He said, Moses, oh Moses, oh Moses, pull off your shoes, the shoes you wear. You can't walk in my territory the way you walking. You can't step on this. You standing on holy ground. You made a decision to stand on holy ground. Is anybody in here ever got on holy ground? When you get on holy ground, it'll make you move. It'll make you throw some stuff off. It'll make you take off your shoes. God, all right, uh, if you get on holy ground, uh, you don't act the same way, uh, you don't talk the same way, uh, you don't preach the same way, uh, you don't sing the same way. Is I got anybody here ever been on holy ground? Uh, right now, uh, I command uh, somebody here to get on holy ground. He uh, said, Moses, oh Moses, Moses, oh Moses. Uh, Take your shoes off. I am, I am the great I am. I am Alpha and Omega. I am Jehovah. I am Almighty God. Moses, do you know me? Moses said, Oh Lord, I ain't worried. He said, go down, tell old Pharaoh to let my people go. Moses said, I study when I talk. I can't speak very well. He said, one thing about me, when you make a faith decision, you don't have to worry about you speaking. I got somebody to speak for you. I don't know about you. All you got to do is let God let God do it. He got somebody to speak on your behalf. He got somebody to talk for you. He got somebody. Hey! He got somebody. 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 from heaven 